Miss Kitty. Miss Little Kitty. Oh, hello, students. Welcome. Um, I'm Scott Hawley, and uh, we're uh, meeting today from the Palace of the Galactic Government. And uh, I've got my Dr. Theopolis shirt on, which if you're not familiar with Dr. Theopolis, you really need to become familiar with the uh, government of AIs that have solved all of our societal problems. I'll put a link down in the uh, down below. Uh, we're joined today by my mentor, uh, the illustrious Firefox, uh, so named after an ancient conduit of knowledge uh, that shortly uh, preceded the collapse of civil society back when people thought it was a good idea to allow unmoderated content to exist on the internet, which thankfully our benefactors shut down for us. And uh, we're going to be talking today. Well, the original topic was machine learning, and I had a prepared lesson on sort of not all machine learning is deep learning, right? Because this is a deep learning course and tried to address the topic of, particularly for business students, do I need deep learning? And I realized this is a subset of a bigger topic. For example, I was seeing on Twitter, people are asking, how much math do I need to know for deep learning? And I routinely see people posting things on the internet like, well, I never needed deep learning to do this or that. And I've been in the business for 20 years. And yeah, I could, I could run off a list of all the things I never needed uh, to get to <clears throat> the amazing place where I am today. So the topic of this first video, which by the way, I'm terrified at the prospect of committing my verbal mistakes to posterity. Uh, the topic is, do I need X to do Y? Do I need this to do that? And uh, you'll see this in particular when it comes to the topic of deep learning. And I submit papers and reviewers come back saying, you know, I know this deep learning thing is hot with the kids these days, but why don't you just use X, Y model? And so do I need X to do Y? And the answer is, well, it depends. You know, um, you very well may not need this to do that or this much of this to do that. It kind of depends on where you want to go. And so some of it comes down to, well, are you content using other people's tools or are you going to need to build your own tools? So in physics and audio, several years ago, there weren't really libraries and models that were doing what I wanted and uh, looking at the problems I was interested in. And so learning how to write one's own model and testing it and learning about things about architectures was very important. And yet there are many successful people, particularly in business world, who are good at taking what others have built and putting them together. And so, for example, there's this great community and startup called Hugging Face that uh, people will post their models, their pre-trained models, and particularly for natural language processing or NLP. And you can just download various models from Hugging Face and apply them to your problem. And a lot of people are really good at grabbing APIs from different things and putting them together. And you don't need to know what's going on under the hood unless you run into problems, right? And that's where it all comes down. So people are asking, well, how much math do I need to know for deep learning? Or for this course, how much Python do I need to know? So I have a Python review lesson that will be a topic in another video. And it's entirely possible that you will not need to go to the depths of math calculus, linear algebra, optimization, high performance computing, kinds of things that are like part of my background that I really value. And you may be able to grab an API from here or there, put them together and get something that's working pretty well. But we're really interested in trying to learn not just how to use what's out there right now, but sort of why it works and being able to kind of probe, you know, what are the consequences of this? How is this affecting people? And then think about, well, 
where are things headed and how can I adapt to what I'm doing right now and make it better? So the short answer is you may not need a certain thing, but I don't think need is the right question. I think the question is what can you do, right? So um, to reviewer number two, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, you don't need deep learning for the particular application I was doing, but in many cases you can get much higher accuracies from these systems that are so-called end-to-end, where they build their own feature detectors and involve nonlinear modeling than uh, sort of standard feature detection and linear models. Linear models offer you greater interpretability, and that's certainly an issue with deep learning models, is that you have so many different knobs and switches that get turned that can solve a really complicated problem that you may not know how to specify the solution to. And in the end, when you ask a question, well, okay, here's an answer that the model put out, why did we get that answer? Yeah, if you don't know what's going on under the hood, and even if you do, it can be extremely difficult to try to come up with an understanding or an explanation of these sorts of systems. So that's really important, right? So on a basic level, yeah, there are things that you don't need. Now, what I'm going to recommend is a kind of intro level of some Python, and we are going to just as we we're going to try to write our own code a little bit, not just grabbing other people's libraries and calling those libraries. We're definitely going to do that, but we're going to do a little model development of our own. And for that, we're going to need to know a little bit of Python and a little bit of linear algebra. That is to say how matrices multiply by each other. OK, and a little bit of calculus, not a whole lot. In fact, the code is going to handle that for us. And again, you say, well, how much do I need? If you want to write your own deep learning library from scratch, there's a lot more that you need to know. So it's degrees, all right? And so this course is intended as kind of an intro level class. And so um, we'll talk about our requirements for intro Python and some matrix multiplication. Now, there are also concepts from statistics that Believe it or not, it's possible for people to come up through the ranks and do machine learning and not have a very strong statistics background, might be stronger in other areas. And so we're going to kind of learn as we go and learn what we need to know. And that's my answer for a lot of these things is kind of learn what you need to get done what you want to do. And then some of the other things you can kind of leave out, because in many cases from even from a course like a linear algebra course, there's all kinds of really cool things you can learn. But really, there's only a few points that we really need to hang on to. And certainly out there on the Internet, various people have written guides for the math you need to know to do machine learning. So so you can look those up and take a look as well. So we're going to kind of cover what we need as we go. And I would encourage you. Yeah, it's not so much a matter of what you need, but what can you do? What can you get done? And that's why these deep learning models have become popular is compared to some other models, which are heavily used in business. Uh, for example, XGBoost. OK, if you go into industry, data science industry, you're going to be running things like decision trees and boosted trees. And uh, you're going to run into people who say, I never needed deep learning for anything. Just look at all this. That's fine. Uh, for the kinds of problems I was dealing with, with unstructured audio and unstructured images, uh, that wasn't a really good approach, but the deep learning approach offered a really straightforward uh, kind of on-ramp to do that, okay? So that's the end for this video. I'll put in a link to the larger discussion on not all machine learning is deep learning. And uh, but note that in many cases, the deep learning approach can be adapted to these other things, even, for example, tabular data, where you may have your features already uh, selected and you don't need an end to end kind of model. You can, in many cases, get higher performance and maybe even learn things about your data by embedding that tabular data into a continuous vector space and then using deep learning on that. And so we can talk about that as well. All right, I'm going to stop here.